Hello everybody! Today I'm going to be talking about voice coil design on planar magnetic driver membranes. The most common design of a planar magnetic membrane is a circular membrane or an oval membrane. Some headphones do utilize a square foil or a rounded corner square foil, but the voice coil itself on all these designs follow the same principle. The voice coil that is a conductive trace runs serpentine through a homogeneous magnetic field created by neodymium magnets. And when it comes to these membranes, depending on what characteristic you're looking for, if you are looking for a treble focused driver, you should be doing smaller membranes. But if you want a full range response from your drivers, you're going to want to maximize the size of your membrane. You might have already spotted that I have two terminals on these coils labeled plus and minus. These are the terminals where the current goes through. And since you want to hook these coils up to an amplifier, you need connection points. These connection points cannot be on the part of the membrane that is moving. So since I wanted to keep things simple in my own design, I just used some one millimeter wide bolts with the head of the bolt connected to the actual connection point of the coil on the membrane. And I actually designed slots for some nuts to go in as to really secure the bolts to the plastic frame that the membrane was attached to with glue. I found that this worked really well and it allowed me to straight up just solder wires to the bolt itself. There are a lot of ways to conduct electricity and connect wires to the coil. You can solder it with aluminum flux and normal soldering, but that is a whole nother process that I won't go into. You saw earlier in the video where I showed these two coils on the screen right here. The difference between these two coils is that the one on the right, which is my first iteration where I started learning about coils, that one is super inefficient when it comes to space. This type of coil forces you to have a smaller membrane than what is actually possible. So let's take a look at this coil and try to understand why it is so inefficient. So let's imagine that this is the size of your headphone. You have stretched the coils to the edges of the headphone. And if you want a circular membrane, this is the largest one you're going to be able to make, since the connection points have to be outside the moving part of the membrane. This voice coil is my second iteration, and this one is a lot more efficient. This one has an even larger membrane than the other one, and it also has one more trace than the other. So how could this be? I'm just gonna go ahead and say that I did make the coil a little bit more space efficient by shrinking the actual contact points for the bolts. So these are about 2mm wide right here, and they used to be about 4 on the previous membrane. But the main thing that makes this coil so efficient, relative to the number of traces that it has, I split the coil up on two sides, and that is the best way I can explain it. If you're having trouble understanding this, just pause the video and zoom in and try to follow the trace. So how is it more space efficient to split up the traces this way? So again, let's imagine that you stretch the coil to the edges of your headphone. Since there is now a lesser number of traces between the edge of the headphone and the contact points, the active membrane will be able to be much larger than on the previous design, where the connection points were three trace lengths away from the edge of the headphone. And keep in mind, we have five traces on this coil. So not only do we get one more trace and a better impedance, but we also put the contact points further out, which let us make the active part of the membrane bigger. I dropped these three renders in my last video, and these simply demonstrate a way to work around structural bolts in your headphone design while designing your voice coil. That's all for today's video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.